Over seven years after 9-11, it's still unfinished business in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, and in the Pakistani tribal areas. I'm here with Howard Mehdi, who's a specialist in the jihad in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the, the tribal areas. I had the pleasure to work with him many times in Afghanistan, in the tribal areas, and in Pakistan, before 9-11 especially. Howard used to live in Pakistan until 2005. He was imprisoned and tortured by the Mushara regime because he was investigating the presence of Taliban inside Pakistani territory. He's been living in the U.S. since 2005. What I have here in my hands, this is just one volume of the 11 volume encyclopedia of the Jihad in Afghanistan. This is the Jihad Bible. Every planner and trainer in Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan or in the tribal areas they have this Bible and they know how to use it. Howard has privileged information about what's really happening on the ground in the tribal areas. And this is what we'll be talking about next. Uh, there will be three stages of the so-called new war on terror as defined by the Pentagon and by Washington. We are now in the first stage. So it's very important to remember the timeline. President Bush authorized special forces incursions, commandos going inside the tribal areas in July. Then there was a very important meeting between Admiral Mullen and General Kiani in mid-August. Two weeks after that meeting, more or less in early September, there was the first incursion. The Pentagon says that they killed Al-Qaeda and Taliban militants. Local sources in the tribal areas stressed that 15 civilians were killed, including women and children. This is a very dangerous escalation. How would you position the timeline? And what can you add to the timeline so people can better understand what's really going on in the tribal areas? So my understanding about this is that uh, the key of new strategy for terror uh, war on terror in Afghanistan and Pakistan starts from the departure of Musharraf. So there is a background of a relation between Musharraf and White House and which was very close. So Washington lost its key player in the whole conflict. So in terms of Pakistani politics, how the main players are positioned vis-a-vis -vis this new Bush administration push? Actually, a uh, situation on ground that Americans have no trustworthy person they can really rely on. No matter it is Zirdari as a civilian in presidency. The situation doesn't help democracy. Or Kiani as a head of armed forces. So the problem right now, both of these individuals have their own importance uh, as well as uh, war is concerned because this war from very beginning needed a political maneuvering in the uh, Pakistani society and a military operation on the front where militants are operative. So far so, we saw that during the Musharraf time, this political front was completely silent. And uh, the whole thing was just simply based on military surgical operations. So, and we saw the failure. Now Zardari has a position I don't know how effectively he can use to maneuver and go in the common people and sell the war as a Pakistani war. He's trying to sell it. He, uh, he is. He just said a few days ago that we stand, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the United States, we're side by side. But it is seven years after. How much Pakistani people are ready to buy this idea? It is definitely a war to fight for the Pakistani people. It is against the common way of Pakistani life. It is against uh, the cultural and, you know, traditional way of Pakistani life. What Taliban or these jihadis are offering is simply very strange. At the same time, it has its own global aspects where we see uh, the partners are coming in. Well, the, uh, unfortunately, our partners in this war do not behave as partners. They are behaving as masters. So this is the biggest disconnect uh, between the global community and, and the local or regional forces as Pakistan and others. And then it comes to the Pakistan army. Well, again, the question is, is this army capable of dealing with this threat? The second question is, if there is a will. Now, 
what is the capacity of one army is a motivation of its soldiers, officers, and, and their personals on ground, which includes intelligence agencies and other logistic areas. I don't see this army is, def, uh, in, in real terms, capable of fighting this war alone because its personnel, its officers, its mid-level mid officers and their soldiers. Pashtuns against Pashtuns. Pashtuns, even it is not about Pashtuns anymore. It is a question of Muslims. Our people is always used. Our people, no matter it is Pashtun or non-Pashtun, Pakistan has four basic ethnic communities. Yeah, there is a really a wave of anger among the common people. And some of these communities, those were not very much uh, uh, in line with the insurgency led by Taliban or Al-Qaeda element, are getting angry and angry. We, we know about uh, at least two big jirgas. Uh, which are held tribal and, councils. Yes, uh, tribal councils uh, invited in North Waziristan and in Khyber Agency, where in North Waziristan uh, they simply uh, talked about that we are the people who never supported insurgency, but we cannot tolerate these attacks in our uh, in our lands, and we cannot tolerate our innocent people killed for nothing. So in North Waziristan, they simply say, and openly said, no matter uh, America has how sophisticated technology, but we, if we need it, we will fight with the stones. And there is a, a, a tradition in, in tribal society when they want to fight against their enemy or implement the decision of their Jirgad or tribal council, they invoke Lashkar, they call tribal army. So they announce that we are, we, if, it does, if it is not stopped, we will inf enforce our Lashkar, uh, invoke our Lashkar or army, you can call, and we may go Afghanistan and fight against our so enemies. So we may face the prospect of millions of tribals in the tribal areas picking up arms against the U.S.? Well, millions may be exaggerated, but definitely it is an out-of-proportion size. A same jirga took place in Khyber Agency. A Koki Khel tribe, which is a sub-tribe of Afridi tribes, who are known for their little sort of moderate uh, way of thinking, have announced similar thing. But the problem uh, which may arise from Koki Khel tribe is that this tribe lives on Grand Trunk Road, which is the major supply route for U.S. and NATO forces inside Afghanistan. All these supplies come from the port city of Pakistan, Karachi. So uh, they can disrupt the supply. Uh, they can easily do it. Uh, and no amount or number of army or force can stop them from it.